So I'm gonna have to. Here, you can pause that. Good morning, and welcome to St. James Lutheran Church. We are glad that you can join us uh, for worship this morning. Uh, things in this recorded worship will look a little different. Um, our organist Priscilla um, happened to be uh, in contact with someone that had tested positive for COVID-19. So for this service, there will not be any music. The music is still printed in your bulletin that you got an email from. Um, so you're welcome to join uh, or do that. So this will be a, uh, a non-singing service. Um, and I will not be doing things uh, a cappella. We do keep in our in our thoughts and our prayers uh, members uh, and, and friends of our congregation, um, Anne Yarnell, uh, who is uh, who is in the hospital um, and uh, and as far as I know hasn't been doing uh, very well. So we keep uh, her husband Jack and her Anne in our prayers. Also, uh, Rick Weiker, our sexton, his wife uh, Deb, we keep. Uh, and our prayers as well. Also, um, just sort of an update from the last time I, I spoke with you, uh, my grandmother did end up passing away um, last Saturday morning. So uh, we keep uh, my dad and, and uh, all of our family in our prayers. We're doing a small sort of graveside service uh, for her and I will be officiating, uh, officiating that. Um, the joke uh, was sort of always with my, my grandma and I was that she Grew up uh, Methodist. She went to a Baptist church for a while, um, but we will end on her being make sure that she's Lutheran um, <laughs> for that. So, so we're thankful for that. All right. Well, let us uh, begin. Oh, I should also make this other announcement that I forgot. Um, we had someone donate a significant amount of money, anonymous donor. Uh, to finish our live streaming equipment. Um, plus, we're able to use some uh, funds from our uh, memorials um, so that we can, uh, whenever we do come back uh, to worship in person, we'll have a, a full live streaming system uh, so that that sort of takes the, the pressure off of, 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 of me and, and our staff of having to try to figure out how to record all these things. But when we have a streaming system, that will be able to be more of a functional Continuing, continuing ministry, even when we're in person, because we know many of you join with us here online, and we're grateful for that and all those contributions. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues. You know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Cut that out. I don't know where I'm going. I'll just cut that out. What we're going to do. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Everlasting God, 
You give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength. Mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will f fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read uh, Psalm 147 responsibly. Hallelujah. How good is it to sing praises to our God. How pleasant is it to honor God with our praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the mountains. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of the horse. He has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. It is a pleasure uh, to be with you uh, today or whenever uh, you're listening to this. Um, I want to first say that we are 
Um, I think one of the things that I've been thinking about, uh, what is our mission? What what has God been calling us to in our mission at St. James? Um, and, uh, and out of the midst of this pandemic, uh, we have been online and we've been having a lot of viewership. We've been having a lot of people um, come uh, and, and view our services. And, um, and I think God is calling us to be not only when we come back to church, which will be very exciting to see everybody once again, um, but also to be an online church um, and to be a, a, and to do it with excellence and to do it really well. And so we're so happy that someone has donated some a significant amount of money um, to get us uh, up and live streaming uh, and really well uh, to do that because I want to continue that ministry. So for all those who watch this online, know that this is never going away. You'll see me more up front. Um, I don't know how the new camera system will work, but um, I'm sure they'll try to get good, good glimpses of my of my face or whatever. So, um, but uh, anyways, if I seem like a little more emotional today, um, I'm recording this the day before I have to do my grandmother's funeral, which is just a small, um, small uh, family uh, thing that we're doing. But I wanted to focus on our text from the book of Isaiah, and um, have you not heard the good news? Well, this is what I'm proclaiming uh, tomorrow at my grandmother's funeral, Um, and my family members will be there, and um, and some of them have never heard me preach before, uh, or do a service before, and um, and I believe that this service, yes, funerals are for the living, um, but also we are um, uh, commending, uh, you know, you you commend the the dead to God. Uh, in that way. And Luther never wanted to speculate of where we go or what happens or or anything like that. But we trust in the promises that Jesus gives us that um, uh, maybe it's a deep sleep that we're in uh, until Jesus comes back. But we know that we, in the promises of our baptism, Jesus says that you are with me in paradise. Um, And is that now? Is that later? We don't know. We're only human. But God is more focused on the now. And that's what we hear from uh, the book of Isaiah for a group of Israelites who are in captivity um, and they don't see a future and they don't know what is our future. Is God with us? And so God tells them, have you not seen or the book or the writer of Isaiah says, have you not seen? Have you not heard? If you look at the dome in the sky, if you look around you, God is everywhere. But sometimes we forget that, don't we, friends in Christ? We forget that God is with us. Um, and and it's um uh, it's not easy, uh, even for even for pastors. And we don't have this sort of magic potion that we are, you know, happy all the time or everything. We're just called to proclaim the good news, um, and and to deliver the sacraments, uh, and that's really what our what our calling is. So, as I think about this text, I think about um, where is God in the midst of this pandemic? Well, God has been where God has always said God has been, um, and that is everywhere around us. Um, not in some particular place, but we do know that we can find God in the sacrament, uh, Jesus Christ in the sacrament. We, we find God in the, in, in the word um, that brings us life. And this is good news. And so what does that good news mean? Well, I think a lot of times Christians use that to say, if you don't believe in this, you're going to hell. But I want us to, rem- I want us to think about it this a different way. As we said before, uh, a few a few weeks back, right? Repenting is to open our eyes to what God is doing in our in our lives, and that is restoring re- relationships with us, restoring restoring them as we as we hear in our our gospel today, uh, re- restoring those uh, things that have been taken away uh, from us, um, and restoring that divine. Remembering that we are gods in our baptism. And sometimes we don't always see that happen. It sometimes it's not an instantaneous thing. Sometimes it happens over time. I'm not God, so I can't tell you when everything is going to be better. And and a lot of times, sometimes uh, in our lives, uh, the the hells that we that we live and the things that we go through, like when we lose somebody, that is death. That is part of sin. Uh, and that is part of the separation that um, that we know that that comes with living in this life, right? But God has, in Jesus Christ, two thousand years ago, uh, when when Christ, uh, as we say in the Apostles' Creed, rose from the dead, descended to the to hell, and rose and rose on that third day, 
is that the good news is that Jesus loves us, that we are not lost. So we hear an amazing grace that Jesus uh, loves us more than we can love ourselves, right? And so we go out into this world knowing that Jesus is always with us, that nothing can separate us from that love of God. Now, we may think, well, um, I got to be able to do something. There's got to be some type of control mechanism. Like, uh, I, I, have, I can control my destiny, right? No. We are disciples. We are followers of Christ. And so we follow Christ. Even at St. James Lutheran Church, when we, uh, when we talk about mission, when we talk about why are we here, um, uh, which is something that I, our, our new council is going uh, that I want to encourage them that we're going to be looking at together is what are what are we doing here? What is God saying to us? What have we heard? What have we heard? One of the things I want to um, point out is is how are you proclaiming the good news to our neighbor? I have gotten so many wonderful emails and texts from people saying that we're so thankful for these services. We're thankful for your sermons. And I can't tell you how much that means to me because pastors, just like you may be in your own job, you want to be encouraged, right? You want to hear people, um, um, you know, uh, and, and also constructive criticism. I mean, that's, that's part of our, our, our growing, right? But when people hear good things at St. James, more people are going to be encouraged to want to tune into St. James. When they hear about a church fighting, when they hear about, oh, that pastor is so awful or, oh, I can't stand his preaching or, oh, did you hear what he said? Think about that from a marketing perspective. If you were to tell someone about uh, the McDonald's Big Mac, right, or uh, what, whatever it may be, maybe it's a, a high def TV and you said, oh, I don't really like this TV or oh, I don't really care for uh, that, you know, that, that, that sandwich. It's not, you know, I don't think it's all that good. If you were to tell that to somebody automatically in their brain, they're going to think when they see that mm, someone told me, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to like that. We have to be encouraged that we are all in this together, that yes, we are a broken people that yes, your pastor is not perfect. Um, and we have to remember that no, St. James is not perfect, but we are a good church. We are a church that I am finding out over just this past week. We are a church that is filled with a lot of people who have come from broken churches where there were bullies, where there were people that beat their pastor up. As I said last week, calling out that evil, right? We're a place of healing, of reconciliation, which all churches should be. That's what we're supposed to be. Have you not seen? Have you not heard the good news? That's what we've come to be in St. James. That we are all in this together. I hope that I'm with you for my next how many years? 35, uh, 40 years. I hope that I'm with you. Because ultimately, one of the reasons why pastors end up leaving churches is because they're either bullied out or not appreciated or uh, end up end up um, just getting burnt out. But we at St. James, I believe we believe in something different. We believe that we have heard and seen a God who loves us. We confess our sins and we turn towards God and know that even when we fall off track, we try to get back on track, right? And to know that we have questions that we believe sometimes in, in, in different uh, uh, ways of God and that's okay because we're in this together. Hope is not lost, friends. Just that I know that this uh, winter will someday be over and I will see the green grass again. I know that COVID will be over at some point and we'll be able to be back uh, in in-person worship. But to also know that for those that prefer online, that um, who, who continue to give uh, and to be part of our community, that you are also part of us and you've been part of us and we're grateful for that. So friends in Christ, may you be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Coming together as the body of Christ, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. For the Church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all the guards, and for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle on the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom and service to those most in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by death, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our sin, Lord Jesus, we call upon the Holy Spirit to lead us as we discern the call of our next bishop of the Allegheny Sin. Guide those who are inviting to be open to this call. Lead all who will cast their ballots and help us to follow where you would have us go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our offering, Lord, we lift up all of our tithes and our offering and everything that we give to you, the work of your good news that is spread throughout the region. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the faithfully departed, who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that, they, that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Share in our life, you look among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hand. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of, of heaven and might. Oh, I miss that one. You know, what happens is, is uh, a lot of times I think too far ahead in the service. And anyways, all right. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. 
Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea, and praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one, and praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, that this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, That this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast and grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us, sending us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God. Blessed Holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for and ever. Amen. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus, come and be fed. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and hope. Amen. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Receive the benediction. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in his peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.